Did you know that we have over 100 elements, each with its extremely unique characteristics and functions? Hi, this is Roxanne with ChemTalk, and in today's video, we will explore the features and reactivity of a particularly famous element, potassium. But first, let's rewind back in time to learn about the origins of the metal potassium. In 1807, Sir Humphrey Davy used electrolysis, derived from the Greek words electron, meaning electricity, and lysis, meaning decomposition, to break down molten caustic potash. Caustic potash is a potassium salt made up of potassium hydroxide, or KOH. By using a negative electrode, or a cathode, and a positive electrode, or an anode, to direct ion flow, Davy was able to decompose potassium hydroxide into K plus and OH minus. Consequently, potassium owes its name to Davy's successful isolation of the metal in caustic potash. Pure potassium is a malleable and waxy metal. It has a low density, is easy to cut, and is one of the most reactive metals, as you will see later in the experiment. When potassium reacts with other elements, it usually forms compounds that are soluble and colorless, like potassium chloride, KCl, and potassium carbonate, K2CO3. When potassium reacts with sodium, it can form an alloy, NaK, or NAC. NAC can be useful in acting as a coolant in fast neutron nuclear reactors, serving as a heat transfer system that regulates the reactor's temperature. Despite potassium metal's high reactivity, its ions are actually vital to all mammalian life. Potassium is a mineral, specifically an essential electrolyte. In the human body, it is crucial in maintaining nerve function, a regular heartbeat, and normal muscle contraction. So now that we know more about the history of potassium and how it interacts with our bodies, let's witness how pure potassium interacts with nature through an exciting experiment. In this experiment, we perform two major steps. First, we add a few samples of sodium into a tank filled with water and observe its reaction. Second, we add a few samples of potassium into both a tank and a frying pan filled with water and watch its reaction again. After this experiment, we will compare the reactivity of sodium versus potassium in water and investigate the scientific mechanisms at play. Since potassium and sodium are highly reactive and dangerous metals, please do not try this experiment at home. Now let's get started. The sodium begins to crackle and pop when in contact with the water. Now let's check out what happens when we throw potassium into the water. We're going to see what happens. Pretty small piece about this big. I'm just going to drop it in. Right, so that blew up uh, pretty instantly. So that's pretty cool. As you can see, the potassium is reacting much more aggressively than the sodium. But why does this happen? Why do sodium and potassium explode in water? The mechanisms behind this violent, explosive behavior of potassium and sodium are actually the same, although the degree of their reaction differs significantly. The long-held assumption explaining their reactivity was that the highly flammable hydrogen gas produced from the interaction between sodium and water causes it to explode. However, as we learned in our latest YouTube video, Unraveling the Mystery of Sodium Metal, chemists Philip Mason and Pavel Youngworth discovered the actual scientific mechanism. When alkali metals like sodium and potassium react with water, they lose electrons and become positive. In the case of potassium, when it reacts with water, it produces potassium hydroxide, hydrogen gas, and heat. The potassium wants to lose an electron, 
whereas the OH from the water, H and OH, want to accept an electron. The K and OH join to form KOH, and the leftover H joins with another H to form hydrogen gas. When we drop potassium into the water, potassium droplets begin to form many spikes that transfer these electrons to the water, forming positively charged potassium ions. These positive ions rapidly repel each other. This charge repulsion triggers the formation of even more spikes that increase the surface area of the metal and allow the hydrogen gas to speedily build up and explode. This process is known as a Coulomb explosion. For a more in-depth explanation of the reactivity of alkali metals and why they blow up in water, check out our recent YouTube video, Unraveling the Mystery of Sodium Metal. The difference between the magnitudes of each exothermic reaction, where each interaction with water releases heat into the surroundings, can be explained by the periodic table. Potassium and sodium are both alkali metals and can be found in the first column of the periodic table. Where they differ, however, is in row placement, which provides a key insight into the differences in each metal's reactivity. Two periodic trends are particularly salient. As you move from the top to the bottom of the periodic table, atomic size increases and ionization energy decreases. This pattern occurs because as you move down periods, an additional shell of eight electrons surrounds an atom's nucleus. Reactivity consequently increases because less energy is required to remove a valence electron from the outer shell since it is farther away from the nucleus and held less tightly. Therefore, potassium is more readily reactive than sodium because as indicated by its lower placement within the periodic group, it has an additional electron shell distancing its one valence electron from the nucleus. When adding potassium to water, we can easily remove its valence electron to produce an explosive reaction. It requires less energy to remove this electron than to remove sodiums, resulting in potassium being more strongly reactive. In general, group 1 metals increase in their reactivity as you move down. Lithium is less reactive than sodium, and sodium is less reactive than potassium. Scientific observations such as periodic trends can be helpful in understanding the characteristics of different elements. Now we better understand the origins of potassium, the reactivity of alkali metals, and why potassium reacts more violently than sodium. What elements do you want to see highlighted or compared next? Let us know down in the comments. Thanks for watching a ChemTalk original. If this video was helpful, then like and subscribe below. For more chemistry resources, check out our website at www.chemistrytalk.org, where you can find hundreds of tutorials and our amazing interactive periodic table. Feed your algorithm more science education data points by following us on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook. Come talk to you later.